Today we're at my homestead and I want to show you a super efficient home that we built that generates all of its own heat and hot water with the sun. We collect rainwater off of the roof and filter it and use it for everything inside the home. And we grow a lot of our own food. And we're starting right now. Zone one, permaculture, baby. If this is your first time on our channel and you want to learn more about homesteading skills like how to build a better home, how to generate your own power, how to collect rainwater, and how to grow your own food, start now by subscribing to our channel and clicking that bell notification so you don't miss out. Today we're at my homestead. Water is life and today we're going to look at some of the systems that we use and some of the major benefits from collecting rainwater. So follow me. This little six foot by eight foot bathhouse can serve, easily serve all of the functions that you need to live on a piece of land. If you have a little hunting cabin out in the middle of the woods somewhere and you wanna build a small shack to crash in. Charge your phone and cordless power tools. To store your hunting gear, to store your clothes, to take a shower, you know, dispose of your human waste properly. Um, this is the way to do it. This is about as small of structure as you can get that provides all of your functions that you need to live. Um, so this is a great example of something that you can build pretty easily that's gonna provide you some self-reliance on a little piece of land. This bathhouse right behind me, um, I built it seven years ago when I moved out onto this property and started living out here while building a self-sustainable homestead. I pitched a tent and started building this thing to to provide the basic necessities for actually living out on a piece of land. I didn't have money to drill a well or put in a septic system, so the next best option for me was to do something as cheap as possible, and that's collecting rain and composting humanure, which we do in this little bathhouse. So the first thing I wanna talk about today, since we're talking about rainwater, is how we're using this little six foot by eight foot bathhouse to provide all of the water that I need to live on this little piece of land while I'm camping out. Uh, there's no creek on here to harvest water. Uh, we don't have a well and drinking water. When I moved out here originally, this was just a raw piece of land. And so what else am I gonna do to get water? Buying bottled water at a store, that gets real expensive. So the cheapest thing that you can do is to collect water off of a roof. Well, because I was in a tent, I really didn't have a roof surface that I could collect water on. Um, and I needed a place to store my clothes and go poop and take a shower in addition to creating drinking water. So I built this little six foot by eight foot bathhouse and I designed it with a two foot overhang. These eaves hang over two feet in either direction. So a six foot by eight foot footprint becomes a 10 foot by 12 foot footprint. So it's 120 square feet of roof collection area for a 48 square foot bathhouse footprint two and a half times the amount of surface area to collect water off of this roof this is a great example of a rain collection system that actually serves a lot of different functions because it serves one to irrigate some of the stuff that i have planted around here it serves as drinking water it serves as the water that i use to take showers and other water that i use for construction and water is a very useful thing to have. So um, this little tiny building that's 48 square foot, if I wanted to, I could lay down inside of it and sleep in there. Right now there's a toilet in there, there's shelving to hold my clothes, and there's a shower that pumps water out of these tanks. It's all rain from the roof and into standard plumbing that we can use to take a shower. Over the years, I've advanced the system to actually use propane to heat that water since it's in the shade and we can't get enough solar thermal to heat it. We use this system right here, this 45 watt solar array from Harbor Freight. This thing was $100 for the three panels and a charge controller that charges a marine deep cycle battery that allows me to run power for the lights overhead 
inside the bathhouse and a pump to pump water out of those tanks and into a shower head. Or this little pump and this amount of water can, can be all that you need to build a house in terms of construction. Um, and there's actually so much water in this little bathhouse. One inch of rain will collect over 60 gallons on this roof. It's gonna produce about 60% of the surface area in gallons for every inch of rain. So if this is 120 square feet, it works out to be about 70 gallons of water for every inch that falls on this roof. So a 300 gallon tank like this only takes us about four inches of rain to fill, which a lot of times is, you know, two storms and that whole tank is full. Um, and really for me, uh, you know, when I was originally living out here camping, I'm taking cold water showers that actually were not very pleasant being that they were really cold in the winter, five minute showers at a gallon and a half a minute. We're looking at 30 showers for, you know, every four inches of rain. The overflow from this pipe drains in to a biological sand filter, which is now dried out because it's not been hooked up. This is what collected and filtered all the rainwater for drinking purposes for years. Um, so it's a pretty, a pretty simple system. Um, this bathhouse, the collection area is the rooftop. All that roof metal drains to a gutter, which then comes down through that rain chain and fills this tank. The water pump inside. Let's take a look at that. It's a really nifty setup. Turn the light on. The water pump is a sure flow, three gallon per minute water pump, 55 PSI. I put a needle on that. That is that deep cycle lead acid marine battery that allows us to char to use power from those solar panels. This is the charge controller that takes power from the solar panels and delivers it at the right voltage to match the voltage of the battery charges it up all day and then we pull power through this switch off of that battery to power this 12 volt water pump and it powers the shower so all we got to do is turn this little switch on and the water pump kicks on automatically and then if we want a hot water shower we just clip turn on the tank right here turn on that propane tank then all you got to do is flip the battery powered ignition switch and it's hot and so the water pump just cuts off as soon as it stops calling for water so that pump runs when it senses that the pressure is less than whatever the set point is 55 psi in this case Nice not having a pressure tank to take up all that room and expense. Yeah, and then so there's another filter. Let's focus in on this strainer right here. This strainer is another stainless steel screen that strains out the big stuff that might be in that water tank. Because right here, this is the hose coming. This right here is the hose, sucker hose coming from that tank through the water pump and into the shower line. And then out to the hose bed there. Yeah, so right behind the bathhouse, there's uh, access to the rainwater collection tank and the valve. So right now, we've got the standard two inch port at the bottom of this IBC tote that we can turn on and off. And then a valve, a garden hose adapter right here where we put a ball valve and then run a little section of hose to a splitter where we can turn on and off the water. Um, and then we can, we can take this off, unscrew the hose, pull the tank off and clean it really easily. So this hose is just a connector to keep the plumbing and the bathhouse separate and so that, such that we can drain it because we wanna be able to drain the bathhouse. So we just take this hose off, lock the, the ball valve closed and then drain the hose and that's how we drain the whole system so it doesn't freeze in the winter. And it's pretty much as simple as that. That's providing 
all of our drinking water, all our water for showers, um, and any water that we need for construction. The toilet, yeah. The dry toilet here, um, you do your duty, your pee and poop goes in the toilet like normal, you wipe, you put it in there, and then you cover it up with a scoop of sawdust. And then if it starts to stink, use more sawdust to cover it up. It's a really simple process. and. Um, all that we have to do um, here, once the bucket fills up, you basically take it out to the compost pile over here. Right now we got a bunch of paper plates from a big party we had, and we need to cover this stuff up, certainly, uh, but dump it right on the top and then cover it up with straw. This is, this is our three compartment compost setup right here, where we've got the active compost that we're adding to and this is actually new active compost and you can see this we just finished right here this side we just finished and when it's all completely composted and broken down it settles about 50 percent of the volume that is just about ready to harvest after a year um, but it takes about six months to fill one of these things up so about every six months we're getting a mature compost and filling another one up and we just constantly have new amazing garden fertilizer that we use on our fruit trees that we use on pretty much anything and everything that is not directly in the ground contact vegetable world <laughs> fruit trees are fine all the fruits way up high we're talking about human manure composting human manure it's totally safe after about a year regardless but it takes about 130 degrees over a period of two weeks. Um, I'll put a link in the description to, below to talk more about, to give you a reference on temperatures and times that it takes to compost thermophilically. But the concept basically is that thermophilic heat loving bacteria eat all of the pathogenic bacteria that might be in your poop and other garden vegetables. And they create super rich garden amendments. So that's the, that's the composting full circle. We're going full circle regenerative living here cradle to cradle and all it takes is this little building to collect the water that we need to live to grow food to do all the things that we need to do on a little piece of land we certainly um, couldn't irrigate a giant garden with the water that comes off this little surface um, but we're going to get into that more here soon in some future videos until next time peace out and we'll see you then mm -hmm.